Hey guys, welcome back. In my last Deltarune video, I talked about the latest development update provided by game creator Toby Fox, which ended with an invitation to the Spamton Sweepstakes just two days later. The Spamton Sweepstakes was a giveaway which offers the chance to win many different kinds of merchandise in exchange for donations to the Child's Play Foundation, which focuses on bringing toys and games to children who have been hospitalized. It's a great cause, and as an added incentive, certain lore and teasers for Deltarune were unlocked as part of the donation goals. It's these uncovered secrets that I'll be covering today, so let's get into it. The layout of the sweep Stakes is designed like an early internet web page, with graphics and a layout that honestly feels kinda nostalgic. I can almost hear the dial-up sound. The graphics of the Sweepstakes logo and the low-resolution GIFs that appear on either side add to this aesthetic. Even the donation chat that appears on the left side with custom messages remind me of old chat rooms. There's also a music player that plays MIDI versions of certain songs from Chapter 2's OST, accompanied by a GIF of Spamton dancing when there's music playing. The first thing visitors of the Spamton Sweepstakes will notice is this fake early internet-styled advertisement that alternates between three variants when you refresh the page. The first one I got was click here to claim your prize, jackpot. Clicking the ad brings you to a peepus, and clicking on the peepus plays a crowd gasping sound. The header on the website reads, you lost. Next, there's the 1,000th visitor winner advertisement. This brings us to a mini game with closet doors. The different images that appear behind the doors are a Ralsei plushie, a peepus, a gumball machine, a snippet from the 1997 art site Superbad Wiki, which is likely an inspiration for the way this ARG plays out, given it's a series of images that hyperlink together. And finally, a chair. A strange thing to note when returning to the closet doors after unlocking the chair changes the site header to, you won with a question mark instead of an exclamation. The chair when clicked on becomes dark, then turns to normal after being clicked again. The combined sight headers when the chair is normal and dark reads, but what if it could get darker than dark? The chair has a chance to become a pair of eyes that laugh, but is suddenly cut off sending you back to the sweepstakes main page. This easter egg can be found early by clicking and dragging the image revealing the eyes, but going back also gives you a better look at these. When facing the viewer, the left eye is yellow and the right eye is pink, the opposite of Spamton whose eyes go pink then yellow. This color scheme matches up with the smiling face we see when doing the side quest to fight Spamton Neo, but the eyes here are square while the eyes underneath the Queen's castle are round, and Spamton's eyes switch colors when he becomes Neo, so this face is likely just him. The final advertisement is the caption, Have You Seen Him, with pictures of Ice E. We are then linked to a blog post cataloging Ice E sightings, quoting Noelle, stating that she has seen an image of Ice E on a box wink at her, and only her sister believes it. Noelle then tells a story of how they attempted to burn the box, but only ended up making it scarier looking. So Azriel, Chris, Noelle, and her sister Des went to the town graveyard to bury it, but Chris put the box on his face to scare Noelle. Des hit Chris and took the box from them before throwing it away herself, but Noelle still thinks it's after her. The post then ends with, for those that enjoyed these sightings, be sure to take a look at the ones from her sister, with her sister being a hyperlink. Clicking it produces an Internet Explorer connection error. The error suggests the user checks the spelling of the URL, deltarune.com slash December. Noelle's sister December's shortened name is Des, so that must be the answer. Deltarune.com com slash des brings us to an image of a red stringed instrument, and clicking it plays a string rendition of Lost Girl. During Chapter 2, Noelle really takes the spotlight for a good portion of the story, and we get more insight into her family life. She seems to imply that Des has passed away, but maybe this teaser implies that Des has simply gone missing. Des is the lost girl. Now that we've covered the ads, let's move on to the products. Occasionally, the unlocked products have different colored hyperlinks that lead to a new web page. Going down the list, the first link comes from the description of the Spamton shirt. The word scrap heat leads to a black screen and an angled door that may look familiar to some. Clicking this door reveals the green room and green green room song that was teased in the development update. Clicking the leftmost door again reveals two figures with wispy, cloud-like hair, formal clothing, and both are holding sticks with pointing hands at the end. Many fans assume these figures to be associated with the weather network, as their appearance fits into the theme of weather. Clicking the figures will change the scene to a checkerboard effect of the two characters doing some sort of attack animation with the caption, the weather always sticks together, reaffirming this theory. The standard battle theme can be heard, only slightly slowed down, implying we'll be fighting these figures in the near future. Let's return to the green room. The middle door reveals a closed curtain, and clicking it opens up to reveal the black and white sax player putting on a sock, screaming, then closing the curtain again. You can do this infinitely. 
Sometimes when refreshing, however, the shadow figure will instead become a small lancer, and clicking him will send you to a page we'll be covering a little later. The final door on the right simply reveals the TV from Chris's house only darker. The site header reads, it's off, foreshadowing another lore drop later on in the sweepstakes. The next hyperlink comes from the Spamton toilet paper. The link leads to an eerie black and white video of the Spamton plush sitting on the toilet. The accompanying track makes this otherwise hilarious video actually kind of unsettling. Looking at the toilet paper itself, you can see the caption, Peep is stickers for sale, bluebubble.rodeo. Going to bluebubble.rodeo reveals new outfits for Chris and Susie, both being dressed as cowboys. The webpage header reads, Get ready for two minutes of mildly entertaining shootout action. The name Bluebubble may be a reference to the website Redbubble, which is a user-generated custom art product site that's often a point of controversy in the art community, due to its lax enforcement of copyright law. The quote, Peep is stickers for sale, being associated with Spamton, also reaffirms this theory for me. The next link comes from the championship belt. There appears to be a blank picture frame that when clicked reveals the annoying dog with the caption, Best Inu, and a more triumphant rendition of the Spamton jingle. At first I thought this meant that the annoying dog has been a Shiba Inu this whole time, but Inu is literally just the Japanese word for dog, so he'll always be a fluffy white Pomeranian in my mind. Next hyperlink comes from the description of the Lancer cookie. Clicking on cute little guys reveals a small Lancer, the same page that we can be brought to from Lancer in the change room. And clicking on Lancer makes a whole bunch appear with the caption, ho ho ho, you just got Lancer. The link in the robot face cardboard box leads to Noelle's game blog, styled after early MySpace-esque social media pages. The blog post describes Noelle's experience with the pet care simulator Cat Petters 2, and how advanced the game is. The music player on this page is heavily distorted. Noelle describes her fear of a certain glitch that would occur when breeding an incompatible egg, so she would punish her pets for falling in love. Another external links with the words until one day will bring the player to an entirely new page. The separate blog post talks about a glitch Noelle got in Cat Petters involving a special white egg that wouldn't leave the game, even when it was reinstalled. Eventually, Noelle decided to raise this immovable egg as a normal pet, but one day, booting up the game, she got the message left home due to happiness, and the egg was finally gone. Noelle then explains that pets only leave when they're neglected and unhappy, not the other way around. She also recalls that the egg did indeed have a name, but it's been so long that she's forgotten. She implores anyone who knows anything about this bug to sign her guest book. This blog post is probably a reference to the man behind the tree in chapter 1. Deltarune.com slash man does lead the user to an image of the tree from chapter 1, and clicking just above the tree where the man usually is sends you back to slash egg slash, in reference to the scene in chapter 1. Clicking sign my guestbook brings us back to the main page of Noelle's game blog. This blog could also be accessed by clicking the fake ad near the bottom of the sweepstakes main page, stating, this site is part of a game glitches and secrets web ring. Bro, I forgot about web rings. This event is making me feel old. The main blog talks about the in-universe RPG Dragon Blazers, a game referenced by the characters in Deltarune quite often. The music player on this page actually works correctly and plays a sort of country rendition of Jingle Bells, keeping in tune with Noelle's holiday roots. There's a forum conversation between Noelle and Birdly about making him a mod, and another figure literally named Sports. This is probably Jockington. Birdly registered their username but with their actual phone number, and fans may be tempted to call the number, but the 555 area code is reserved for fake, unused numbers in media. Also, apparently this number randomizes itself upon loading the webpage, but always starts with 555 to avoid generating a real number. Also, Birdly mentions they accidentally deleted Minecraft, which is again a reference to the now deleted Mike Matei video, Minecraft with Gadget. Minecraft is also mentioned by both Spamton and The Hacker in Chapter 2. This next secret may have been an accident. Going into the description of the candle, hitting show controls on the video player and unmuting it plays a distorted audio of what sounds like the person filming the candle talking about the shot, as the words camera and reflection can be heard. I can't be close to the camera. The next hyperlink is the Ralsei nurse outfit plushie. This hyperlink leads to a still of mid-combat between the fun gang and two of the black and white figures. Clicking the image reveals that it's not a still at all, but it's actually a combat preview with the slowed down combat music. The gang appears to be able to rapidly fire hearts at the opponent to knock their socks off, and the opponents can use their saxophone and gun as part of their bullet patterns. This makes sense as when we saw the shadow figures in the development update, they didn't have socks at all. Next, the Your Best Friend Heart Locket leads to a private friends only blog post from Noel talking about how Chris and Azriel would play the piano. It reads, It's funny, there was a time when they were coming over almost every day. We'd play and we'd play, then after a while they'd suddenly get very still, like they were remembering something. They'd go into the dining room to get a snack, then after a few moments I'd hear the piano. 
The first few times, I went in to watch them play, but when they realized I was looking, they'd always shut the piano and come back. So over time, I just started staying on the couch in the living room. I'd lie there, listening to them play, sometimes for hours, sometimes even until I fell asleep. Even then, what were they thinking about me? Maybe they weren't thinking about me at all. They didn't have a piano at their house, so they probably just came over to use mine. Even then, with my eyes open, there were times where I wasn't even sure if we were friends. But when I closed my eyes, it felt like a concert just for me. It's been made apparent that before the events of Deltarune, Chris was an avid piano player. He and his brother Azriel used to play for the church choir. There's a scene where the hospital receptionist mentions Chris used to play, and when attempting to, Susie makes fun of Chris because she thinks he can't actually play, which visibly pisses him off. I think not having Azriel around has taken Chris's desire to continue to play. The song player on this page is a mess of piano sounds, likely a song to MIDI conversion. This. Sounds awful. The Peepus Bathrug links to another Noel blog post regarding Cat Petters 2. One day Noel received an email of random numbers and letters and decided to import it into Cat Petters on the off chance that it was a mod. Strangely enough, it actually managed to load the random characters into the game and produce a single blue circle. Then the circle began to multiply with the notifications congrulations rapidly. The game eventually crashed and Noel had to wipe her game data. This left many fans to speculate that Noel created Spamton, but I don't think that's the case. Sp Hampton has the ability to create Peepus, and is likely the one who sent Noel the random email in the first place. One of the spam emails Noel mentioned, Ho Chi Mamas can get big too, is Spamton's exact manner of speaking. Not only this, but one of the answers to the Spamton Q&A when asked if Noel is Spamton's mom, Spamton flat out denies it and claims that he gave her a little blue gift because she would actually read his emails, unlike everybody else. Next is a link in the description of the engraved wristwatch. This is another friends only Noel blog post describing an interaction between Susie and Chris. It reads, So that new girl I keep talking about, she really, really, really hates Chris. And you know what's weird? Literally only Chris seems oblivious to this. Or no, are they oblivious? They're literally getting bullied. Do they just not care? Then again, who knows what Chris is thinking? I just don't get why they don't tell their mom. Or better, switch seats with me, like I keep saying, lol. I guess they don't want to be at the front of the class, but she doesn't ever bully me, even when there would be a huge opportunity to, so... Come on, switch seats, everyone would be safer that way. Like, you're not gonna believe what happened today. After the bell rang as usual, everyone rushed to see who could get out of class first. I stayed behind a bit to help Alphys put away some books, and look for some mysteriously missing supplies. Meanwhile, Chris was still asleep, face down in a totally blank notebook page. And for some reason, Susie hadn't left either, staring at Chris's heads. Sniffing it? Wonder if she likes scented candles. Eventually, I started to leave too. I even almost said bye this time. But I was a bit worried about Chris, so I stayed outside the classroom to, um, watch. I had to stay totally out of sight, holiday family ninja style, since Susie didn't seem like she was going to do anything until she made sure I was gone. After a while, Susie got up, knocking her chair over. She jumped into Mrs. Alphys' seat and put her shoes up on the desk, getting dirt everywhere. I just know I'm going to have to clean that. She grabbed the apple Birdly had given Alphys a few days ago. You know, one of the ones she's literally never eaten. Held it up and started talking. Hey, idiot. Chris didn't look up. Hey, idiot. Chris did not look up. Chris. Chris looked up. Susie rolled her eyes and showed all of her horrible and very cool teeth. Nice shampoo. Apple flavor, right? Better be careful about wearing that around me. Then she bit the whole apple in half, including the core. She even ate the seeds, which, um, contain arsenic if you don't know. Don't eat those, Susie. Anyway, Chris didn't react, so she continued. Keep smelling like apples, you might end up like this. Chris didn't react. Bitten, she pointed at the apple. In half. There was like the most awkward silence, and then snickering. But it wasn't Susie. No, it was Chris, just barely stifling some laugh. Did they think that it was some kind of weird joke? Whatever it was, Susie must have thought that she was getting made fun of, because she immediately just launched the apple right at Chris. But Chris, with their gamer reaction speed, held up their notebook like a shield and blocked it diagonally, bouncing it into the air, and actually caught the apple. Then, took a bite of it. Gosh though, did that make Susie mad. You little... She ran over and grabbed Chris by the hair, staring into their face, really close. I froze. I knew that if I didn't do anything, Chris would get hurt, or worse. But something inside me just froze. I just stood there, holding my breath. And Susie kept talking. One day your mom's gonna get sick of you, you little freak. And as soon as that happens, Susie laughed. I felt genuinely sick. Someone might make you disappear. And then she'll finally realize how happy she was without you. But after all that, Chris didn't say anything at all. Susie exploded. Say something, you idiot! It felt like her voice echoed around the room forever. Then, when it finally went quiet, Chris's mouth looked like it moved. To be honest, moved so slightly, couldn't even tell if they said something or what. But whatever it was, Susie's attitude 
suddenly completely changed. She let go of Chris, backing off quickly, then left the room in such a hurry, she easily would have won today's leaving first race. I really wish I could have seen her reaction, but I was so scared she would see me that I literally just jumped into my locker. In the end, all I could see through the little slats was her shape from behind, going towards the entrance of the school with her head held low. Finally, I heard the entrance door close, I sighed, and suddenly, all that frozen feelings that had had build up in my chest flew out of my body all at once. Holy cheese and crackers, I said to myself. I almost started laughing from relief. Then suddenly, my locker's door flung open. Chris was standing there. I started to stutter hello, and they just slowly, slowly shut the door on me and left. Well, that just happened. Well, I ordered apple shampoo. Maybe if I wear it too, she won't bother Chris as much. We know based on the very beginning of chapter one that Susie and Chris were definitely not friends and that Chris is very much the quiet type. Whatever Chris said to Susie must have been absolutely devastating for her to just turn on a heel and leave. The fact that we're even hearing about this event as part of the teaser gives me hope that we're actually gonna know what happened that day as part of some sort of flashback in the upcoming chapters. Next up, the Spamton Celebrity 3D Photo Cube links to an image of Susie lying down. Clicking Susie will make her open her eyes and begin to blink. Fans assume this to be Morse code, but personally, it doesn't appear to have any rhythm to it because the blinking pattern isn't consistent after refreshing the page. Next, the engraved wedding ring links to a crossed out image of Chris's TV with text, presumably spoken by Spamton, that reads, That damn boob tube, you're the one that should be having a refreshing night's sleep in the recycling bin. Everything's his fault. His fault. Pay. Everyone's gonna pay five easy payments of $9.99 until they're all in the disposal area begging for my everyone. Everyone except. Highlighting where the final line of text would be highlights the name Mike. Mike is mentioned by Spamton disdainfully, and Spamton does not trust this person, considering them a criminal. There's a very good chance that the square eyes seen in the chair area are Mike, and that we're going to meet him in Chapter 3, similar to how Jevil mentions the Queen in Chapter 1. Another thing to note is that the URL is deltarune.com slash damnutenna, with each letter being spaced out by an underscore. Is Tenna a new character, never before mentioned? Could Mike and Tenna be the weather folks, or are we not going to see them until Chapter 3's proper release? Am I Tenna? I'm just kidding. Clicking the TV leads to a static screen, and scrolling through reveals the message, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. The site header reads, you're early, and scrolling even further reveals two static squares. The top square leads to a blue screen, and scrolling up reveals a sort of Atari-style level with a black door. The static sound effect on this page seems to fade in and out, kind of giving this feeling of standing on a beach. The site header here reads, aren't you forgetting something? Clicking the door brings us to another blog post by Noel, this time actually talking about Dragon Blazers 2. The post starts with, did anyone else wander around this area as a kid with a broken image embed? Noel then goes into detail about a bug in the game involving a maze, and if the player doesn't have a certain character to guide them, then they're basically softlock out of that part. Noel, however, did find the exit on her own, but couldn't unlock it as she didn't have the key. Perhaps this area with the black door is a direct reference to this, but we were allowed entry as part of the ARG. This could also be foreshadowing upcoming events in the coming chapters, but we won't exactly know until we play it. The bottom static square in the previous page brings us back to the green room, and kind of creates this sort of full circle effect as the green room is one of the first discoveries people made during the sweepstakes. One of the unlocks from the sweepstakes is a Spamton Q&A, though only a few of the answers involve lore. Spamton seems to know who Des is, stating that he couldn't pull personal info but knew her for responding to the free friend finder emails that he would send. Spamton also mentioned his rocky relationships with the Addisons and how he transformed into a big shot. The fact that he doesn't know who the knight is and his continued hatred for Jevil. Fans seem to think that Jevil and Spamton used to be married and got divorced based on this Q&A but it's pretty apparent that they've had very opposing views and just straight up don't get along. Spamton also gets upset when asked about Mike, insisting we know nothing and that it'll stay that way. Spamton mentions that Mike has a crew, perhaps alluding to a television crew. Finally, the last unlock was a contest for Spamton's fate. Donators now decide where their money goes, towards Spamton's freedom or silence. It was a pretty close tug of war for a while there. Both Fangamer slash Toby Fox and Siva Gunner donated actual thousands towards Spamton's silence in order to even the playing field. Eventually, when the sweepstakes ended, $322,805.68 was raised for Child's Play. And we the people bought Spamped in his freedom, perhaps changing the events of Deltarune as we know it. The whole event ended with a live stream finale, announcing the winners of the giveaway items. Bazaar doesn't even begin to describe this live stream. Based off the style of televised infomercials from the 80s, this surreal send-off for the sweepstakes is going to live on to be one of the greatest events in Deltarune history. As far as hidden lore and such goes, the live stream 
Mushroom doesn't really delve into that at all, but if you like Spanthin and Toby Fox's style of comedy, I definitely recommend checking it out. And that is every piece of lore, secret, and in the Spamton sweepstakes. Deltarune fans are definitely eating well this year with way more teasers for things than we had for Chapter 2 by a long shot. Who's Mike? Who's Tenno? What different sets are we gonna see? And will Susie finally get to live out her dream of destroying a city like Godzilla? I am very excited to get the answers to all these questions and more when the new chapters drop. Let me know your thoughts and feelings below, and thanks for watching. Until next time.